still has a chance to come back in this uh, for the top 16, uh, through the top 16, through the top 8. It's not impossible. It's just going to take him, you know, beating his next opponent. Yeah, uh, but Dog is first default blood, I would say. Yeah. He, that's his last chance, right? And yes, that's it. If Dog doesn't win this, there's no, there's nothing waiting for him in order to come back. Yeah, exactly. So this is his last chance. He has to be confident uh, during this game. And JG comes from, I would say, quite a disheartening loss. Right. right. Yep. So um, he needs to shake that off and be at the top of his skill as well. Right? Yeah, I think with JJ though, he's got the experience, right? You know, this is definitely not his first tournament or anything like that. So I think he'll be okay. Uh, but what I'm really interested in is actually like two rogue players. Um, oh, yeah, in terms of, th they're both bringing Rogue, but also they love Rogue, both of these right. guys. So it'll be really cool to see them face off against each other and see how uh, how these uh, lineups go. So we do see two, the two Rogues there. We see the Mage and the Warrior from Dog. No, and Druid! The, <laughs> and the Warlock and the Paladin from JJ. So this what is, is going to be a nice cast. What guys. is this? What? How did they get here? <laughs> like, what went wrong? I'm guessing Dog might have decided to bring something like a Tempo Mage to the array because it beats Paladin and to some extent. Uh, sometimes uh, it'll do fine-ish, depending on how it's built. And you've got the ability to beat Druid, of course, which is probably the most popular class in the event. So, well, it's okay. They, they were allowed to be at this stage of the tournament without the Druid because they could have changed, changed their decks. Changed their decks. Yeah. They, 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 they did, yeah. And this is the, the loser's round. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that, should, that says a lot about... Uh, about yeah, decks. but one of those players will be advancing to the next stage, to day three. So I'm not sure if they can change the decks for day three. No, they can't. No, they can't. No, whatever they're locked now, is locked. A player so. without a druid in day three, and that's, that's unheard of. So, yeah. so do we all just on the side just want whoever wins this to win the whole tournament? Pretty much. Because like, there's just no druid in the line. I guess I guess Lothar may be biased, but I'll be biased too because my Super JJ from Complexity does not have a druid. So I've got the edge there. Um, I'm hoping <laughs> JJ takes it. Again, it's going to be a pretty big thing for him since he you know, pretty much only has one big title to his name, Seed Story Cup. Uh, and that is something he wants to add to his roster. Just an Insomnia win would be big. Yeah. And also, by the way, uh, Doc was complex this players as right. right he's right? gone though traitor <laughs> well straight in with that yeah but he's not yeah he's oh. done oh, now. He's, that's it he's out yeah but i still uh, i still think dog and uh, jj are two of my favorite players just because they've stuck to rogue throughout pretty much everything mm -hmm. and there's not that many players that have been bringing it as consistently as they have yeah that's true i mean when you ask a rogue player is he favorite against a certain you know auto deck yeah they're always favorite yeah. against every auto deck yeah, I mean, if the cards line up, it is true, but, you know, <laughs> I, I guess it's just that it feels like you've got more flexibility in the way you play Rogue, and it's easier to, like, your tools are flexible, which makes them, to an extent, look like they can win you any game against any club. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you asked a, a diehard Rogue player, so can you beat Control Warrior that gets perfect removal every turn, has two Uzis and a Harrison? and gets the true, uh, true Heart on curve, they'll still be like, yes, sure, we Probably. can win. Yeah, I can still win this. All right, so Dog is going to be queuing up his uh, mage. Looks like Tempo from what I saw, and JJ has the Secret Paladin. Uh, might be a bit of a different type of list because it might play a bit slower than some of the usual Tempo lists, but we'll see. I was just wondering, why would you mulligan away an unstable portal? Um, maybe you're looking... Is there a two-drop you're looking for that is... Maybe Mad Scientist hard? I don't know. I think one one of the things as well is like he know, uh, he's presuming or no he'll know actually this is secret paladin right and he wants that guaranteed early board whereas if you portal into something time mana even with the reduction the portal gives if you can't play it till turn five then you've just done you know you've done nothing really right. you know you've got that good to go later but it doesn't give you anything instant I mean if you portaled into like even like a mini bot then yeah that's pretty damn good <laughs> versus the paladin but. If you get anything late game, it's going to be a struggle. So mm -hmm. might be the only reason. This is going to be an interesting turn, actually, because the Secret Keeper is a very threatening card in itself, even though it doesn't look too too good as a 1-2 at the moment. It really can escalate out of control. It, but it has to be dealt with. Yeah, exactly. It's so I'm now wondering, does he just hope for the you know the odds on the arcane missiles here, or does he just go flame cannon and just uh, get rid of it? I think it's just a flame cannon turn, yeah. because you can uh, be mana efficient on turn 3 with the arcane missiles and pink if you need yep. it. Right. Or I think against a deck like Paladin, you'll find targets for that. Yes, yeah. and um, especially the Flame Cannon goes lower into it, like the value of the Flame Cannon goes lower as the game progresses because you have the tokens from Massive Battle, you have the pure power from the Mage, you have the Hunted Creepers that will bring, you know, yeah, more in this really matchup as well. Yeah, there's so many low tokens for the Flame Cannon. 
So definitely a good choice. So Liquid Dog stacking up the removal. I mean, this is pretty much the mo one of the most removal heavy hands you'll find in the Tempo Major Leon if you don't have the Mana Worms and Sorcerer Apprentices. So uh, it, it almost feels like he's going to be playing the control game for a long time. The Mad Scientist is a really great pickup here, I think. Yeah, I don't know what secrets he's playing. We haven't seen any show up yet. <laughs> That's true. The liquid dog, that sounds so funny. Yeah, like you just put him in a blender. Yeah, you can, you can fit <laughs> in a bottle. <laughs> so <laughs> Wow, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Liquify a dog. Oh, God. That is awful. Next step is just to bottle him in that spot. Yeah. So it looks like uh, JJ is simply going to pile on too much pressure for uh, for Dog to handle right away. Now, one of the things that I have to wonder is whether or not this is going to be Counterspell. Um, mm. Wow, okay. Even with Counterspell, that I is think that's still a turn for the Flame Waker. I might wait, just because the problem is if Low Step comes out, you're dead. The thing is, right now, you have... <laughs> Like you're missing out on the opportunity to play maybe three spells if you wait one turn to play the Arcane Blast with the double missiles. So on turn six. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think here, like, Flame Waker, double Arcane Missiles is fine. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. It, it just clears everything. You know everything else feels too slow. I think that low tip is the best option right. because you play around turn five Challenger. Assuming it gets coined out, yeah. Yeah, but you know your opponent has a coin. Yeah. Yeah. So you play around a, uh, a Mrs. Challenger will whoop be a massive drop on this turn and also it's very important to kind of bait out more minions for your opponent and you do that by playing Lotus because your opponent can play spells so the only, only other possibility yeah, because they can play are basically minions or a cook hammer right that's about it Oh, Belch is a pretty nice pick but he is going to go for the juggler mainly because I imagine he's going to trade this creeper straight into the uh, into Lothar and what this did as well this kind of played around uh, mirror entity so he could play the juggler. If it was Mirror Entity, then he could just kill it quite easily. Whoa! Keep Duplicate! It. Duplicate! All the low thefts. Now I feel like maybe that Flame Waker was very appealing. But again, you had to deal with that yeah. turn 6 yeah. challenger. Um, and you don't have too many more spells that will cost you one mana in hand after you've exhausted this one. Is everyone ready for the pings? This well, will I be a Disco Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also... Oh, flame on! <laughs> I think you play the Arcane Missiles first here, because if it's Avenge, you proc an Avenge and then want to Arcane Blast that target, right? Yeah, uh, to guarantee yeah, the yeah. hit. So this is just, uh, it's a small thing, but good sequencing from, from Dog there, just to play the uh, correct minion first, uh, the correct spell first, sorry. Yeah. And the good Dog, by the way. Ooh. Well, that's well, not still bad. five You got this. Yeah, you uh, can. And here we go. Right. <laughs> Done, now you have two low depths. Just... <laughs> My God. Yeah, and he's got the Conjurer to find a spell that he absolutely needs. Something like a Polymorph, Polymorph Boar, Polymorph Cheap. Uh, whichever one of these. What a great happens. turn. You can get a third low tab. <laughs> if that happens, that will be awesome. Do you, do you, you guys can play both. Do you guys actually like low tab here? Because I imagine towards a fireball. It's awesome. Uh, it's I like awesome because you know that the opponent wasn't able to play two cards to the left um, from his hand. I mean, he chose not to, to play two cards from his hand, and one of that was a coin. So it was actually great, great to yeah, play another. Incidentally, here he also picks up a three drop yeah. to play immediately. So very good uh, portal for Don. Hmm. Well, well, well. Um, the coin Tegran would have been awesome. Right. He could actually uh, kill the 3-3 three, three and then um, keep a Voldemort in his Belcher again uh, to buff it back up if he wanted to go that route. But it looks like he's just going to actually just kill off that Flame Wake. He's just seen the havoc that has been wreaked in the past turn or so from that card. So it's pretty reasonable that he wants to get it just uh, taken away from the board. Uh. Who is the Paladin now? <laughs> yep. There will be one ones on both sides. And look, another Lothar. How is that even possible? If someone just killed him. You know? That is absolutely yeah. insane, though. JJ's in a really tough spot. So the deck that the Dog is running is... Uh, it looks like a typical tempo deck, but the duplicates really add a bit more value to some of those mid-game plays that you otherwise... Yeah, you'd starve for cards very often in a deck like this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much the reason it's been... Uh, like, it's been changed from what it used to be. So now we can just deal with Tyrion instantly with one of the fireballs and deal 10 damage to the face, which leaves your opponent at 9 health, so a top-decked Frostbolt. Yeah, and, and, and also importantly, the, the weapon from the Tyrion isn't really going to do much, because well, normally, normally you want to trade, but when you trade into 5 fives with uh, when you're on 9 health, 
maybe not the best play. Yeah, probably not. Probably not a good choice. Yeah, Master of the Battle, a dead card in the hand right now. The Belcher with a redemption. Uh, like if he had. Do, does he actually have to redemption coin bless the kings on the Belcher and run the 3 1 into the 3 2? So you guarantee the redemption on the Belcher? I'm pretty sure that's yeah. the only yeah. play you've got, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the only play you have. Yeah, this is pretty nice actually. He's putting up a very big wall that was uh, probably uh, quite unexpected, and then to go into the redemption as well. But still, you're dead to just the fireball. Oh, sorry, uh, frostball. Yeah, let's see what yeah. Dog picks up though. There's a chance he doesn't find the uh, the card he's looking for, and in that case, he's going to be forced to trade away his entire board. Oh, a little bit more damage, a little bit more digging, but you might just pick up a pyroblast or a polymorph. Mm -hmm. Why not? Polymorph bore. Another duplicate gets some more load deaths. Ice Barrier is not even that bad. When These three are amazing, I think. Mirror but Image, mirror image is better. I like. Because no, almost no Paladin plays um, Consecration anymore, right? So basically the Mirror Image gives you two counters for 10 HP because of the weapon. Right, so. And also he can quite easily, if he really wants, play the uh, Azure Drake this turn. And then just go Antonidas mirror image for like guaranteed, no matter what happens, leave till the following turn. But it's 12 damage coming from the, from the Belgian if you're not trading no peps now. I mean, if you play mirror yeah, image and you don't yeah. trade, then Consecration would end up dealing 14 damage to you, right? So it's close yeah, enough. Yeah, that's true, yeah. You might be very, exactly like a little bit cautious uh, with the way you play this out. So is there anything that uh, JJ finds? Because it feels like even though he's behind on oh, board, it wouldn't take all that much. Like a Consecration wipes the board, he keeps the slime. No, almost. Either. It's going to be like one damage short. Noble Sacrifice is not going to do too much. It's going to uh, it's going to stop, like make Lethal a little bit more difficult because it is quite minion based at the moment. And Dogger doesn't even have any burn in hand and not even a, a spell to prop with that Archmage Antonidas to gain an additional fireball for next turn either. Yeah, JJ recognizing this 5 attack weapon is cute, but it's unfortunately not quite enough. Uh, we'll see what, end up, what Dog does in a position like this. I mean, I don't mind the uh, just a Drake play where you draw and ping to kill the Belcher. But actually not just but like you don't Antonidas know what that ball. secret is. Well, he's going to attack in no matter what, right? right? So we'll find out what that secret is no matter what, because I don't think there's a world in which you don't attack here. So you just Frostbolt face after Yeah, I think you, just, uh, you attack, see that it's Noble Sacrifice, and Antonidas Frostbolt face, you yeah. have lethal next turn. There's no way you can heal up unless somehow... Yeah, well, you can't attack with the True Silver right. either, so like that's why I think you just go Frostbolt face, because he knows it's not Competitive Spirit, which is the key one, because that's the one that gets him in a, bit, in a bit of trouble with all these tokens down. It's still not enough damage. What do you think about it? Something it plus four... If you kill the it's not enough. And you frostbolt the face. Yeah, even with Blasted Kings, it wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you frostbolt the face just to avoid the damage from the from the weapon, yeah. right? So it's not really that important. Just win the game instead. And that is nothing helpful for JJ. Yeah, this doesn't look good. The Paladin. Yeah. And it's going to be conceived from JJ is there's no way to heal and definitely no way to give himself lead. Now, I want to talk about Dog's matchup with this mage against the Malagos Warlock. It's not something that I've seen too much of. Uh, and I think JJ is one of the few, maybe like the only one who brought Malagos Warlock. Maybe two people did. Uh, it's not a very common deck that we've seen in the event. I just don't know how it lines up against the mage. I'm thinking about it. Uh, the Arkham Bless are kind of useless, I would say. They only kill the Dark Peddlers. They help maybe with... Um, in the game bosses to finish them off after a mad scientist trade, but that's about it. Still, one one remains, right? Uh, the Ar the Arcan missiles are not helping at all. Right. It's a very interesting matchup. Yeah, I, I think on the f on like the flip side of that, because I actually kind of like the tempo mage here because you have cards like flame cannon, as we can see. You have a lot of removal for these like bigger minions that uh, the Maligos warlock. Uh, plays so things like the uh, Blackwing Corruptor and things like that you can remove fairly easily mm -hmm. and sometimes you're just too fast for the Maligo slot. I can see that. They, can, they normally take like, quite a while to get going and just rely on those mid-range minions to pressure and the Temple Mage can actually just deal with them quite well I feel but we are going to go into Temple Mage versus the Rogue this game and again pretty decent opening from Dog I think probably didn't want to see the Mirror Entity in hand especially because he does have a Mad Scientist but still not, does. not completely terrible. Because he might just want to go the route with the, with the duplicate, right? And he might get an example, a let's Drake say, or the Sorcerer's Apprentice, which sure. is awesome. Yeah. You have with the double um, 
double decrease of the mana, uh, mana cost of an adversable spell, which makes a very efficient turn with, for example, Antonidas or the Flame Wave, which does an insane, does that deal insane amount of damage, right? Yeah, so it's, um, it, it, you can do that kind of combo with a duplicate, definitely. What's going to be interesting is if the Mirror Entity actually gains him one of the rogue minions, then he duplicates something. Yeah, that, which yeah is gonna that's be, true. Which is going to start going really strange, especially if something like a Tomb Pillager, maybe. Or even, like as we can see, if there's uh, cause there's no real minion can play this turn, this looks like it could well be in his Yaw Drake next turn that he's going to give his right. opponent, and then he gets to duplicate. And when a Tempo Mage can cycle as well as put some spell pa power on the board, it seems pretty good. Yeah, we just have to know, though, if Dog is going to, like, let JJ give him a minion or if he's going to try to force him to give him apprentices, right? Because you can't let that little 3-2 live, but unfortunately, yeah. if you remove it in this case, you know full well there's a duplicate among these two secrets. Yeah, exactly. So the Azure Drake is not looking good next turn because you just use the backstab, right? Yeah. So you can't trigger the duplicate beforehand. Right? And then it's still not great against the Azure Drake. Maybe it was wise to keep the Mad Scientist on the board and play the Azure Drake with the backstab next turn to kill the Azure Drake that was being spawned right. by the mirror entity. I can see that. Yeah, it makes sense. Because in that way, you're basically... Oh, he's actually going to set up the oil weapon just to make sure that the Drake he plays yeah. is going to get answered. And I love exactly. that play. I yeah, love that's, that's really nice, actually. And he's just going to have to make a call on what, yeah, what he wants to actually duplicate here. Because the Sorcerer's Apprentice is going to come down with... Oh, hang on. Does he actually just frostbolt this turn? Now? This is what I wanted to yeah, say. Yeah, I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to, to wait till you finish the sentence, but I just wanted to say that if Dog sees the plan, sees the uh, just knows what is the plan for for Ju Super JJ, he can go for just the uh, for just the frostbolt and unstable portal and play around the mirror entity as a trick. Right, with the right. board to clear the comes Which with it. Awesome, insanely good to play. Unfortunately, he doesn't go for it. Because also, you wouldn't even have to think that, like, oh, he's got an Azure Drake. If you think Tomb Pillager, SI Summon Agent, uh, Gadgets, and maybe, you know, like, all the minions are probably going to die to this weapon, actually, that, that uh, he's going to mirror entity into. So, it w <coughs> excuse me. That's a new choke. It wouldn't have been uh, too bad of a play whatsoever. I would have kind of liked the Frostbolt, because he has so much follow up as well. Um, he has a, another. Arcane Intellect and a portal if he wants. He can just go straight into the Conjurer. So I would have liked that play, but maybe he's just like, well, you either now have a choice between letting me potentially do crazy stuff with the Apprentice if you leave it alive, or you kill whatever you give me. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree completely with that. So a preparation would be pretty sweet here, right? Like if you can get to prep uh, like a flurry, would you do it? Because you would give Inst him Apprentices. Instant, right? You have to do it. Yes, I think so. That is not the prep, but still, he does get to choose what he wants to give to his opponent. I, I really doubt uh, you'd give apprentices. They the opponent are way too cheap and too powerful. You, oh, wow, is he just going face? Okay, so he's going to go face because he has Blade for next turn. And um, what was, I was going to say was I felt like the Azure Ouch. Drake was the, be was the better minion to kill and duplicate because the opponent's got so, so many cards in hand that the cycle won't really matter too much because they're playing five mana to cycle sure. card. Yeah. I mean, just look at that. This Seven, 11, 14, 18 damage this turn if everything goes to the face. I would say you might play the unstable portal first, see what minion will you get. Maybe it's spell power Jungle as well. Moonkin. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> that would be yeah. nasty. Please. Let's not, let's not make that happen. You still get decent trades by playing for the board, but you are extending into Flurry. And coming from an, ex, like, an exceptional rogue player the dog is, I want to say uh, this is not at all what I anticipated. Yeah, not at all. I mean, if, if there would be a backstab just to kill the pile of cheddar. It's not that it makes sense. Yeah. Never mind. But um, I would say that the, the, the burst damage was so appealing. Yeah, right. I, think, I think this could still be OK, though, because if the Flurry comes down, he gets the Sorcerer's Apprentice back, doubled up. So With then next Mage. turn, he can still do like double Sorcerer's Apprentice and do silly things as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's too terrible. And what he's done here is the Frostbolt went onto the Drake because if Blade Flurry happens, which we can see uh, comes down now, then a Frostbolt face does nothing. You can still Blade Flurry if you froze him. But he does take the two uh, Apprentices. He gets the two, three off the, uh, the Shredder, which is okay. It's going to get cleaned up by the Deadly Poison, but now Dog has a, a lot of options, especially because he's on coin as well. Yeah. He still has that <laughs> coin with Apprentice, which means, you know, that's actually a two reduction for a spell if he really wants. That, that is a pretty That is That actually problem. changes things. What if you just play Apprentice, coin, low tab, and... I might wait. Uh, do you mean with the Archmage to get, like, the follow-up turns? 
Um, but if you do that, then I think you have to wait one turn to pull the trigger on the entire sequence. Otherwise, you'll be low on mana for the uh, the Arc Mage. This is a type of deck that can pull off the Exodia, right? Like the infinite fireballs. The reference. Yeah, I think the um, I think the problem here is is if he drops an apprentice now, it is just going to get killed by the weapon. I think I don't think he can really leave that if it's followed up by the Lothab, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't really think he can leave an apprentice up, and he's not got a really great way to kill the Lothab. And then sapping a Lothab as well, even though he has the mana for it, definitely not something you want to do. But if you get, I guess, the uh, the apprentice to be attacked by the weapon you're still in a position where the rogue doesn't have a flurry follow-up. It's guaranteed yep. that if there's a second one, it's never going to be uh, it's never gonna be coming up. So. Rogue is going to a dangerous place. Yeah, this is very scary if you're JJ. Sixth in health is not a lot. <laughs> no, no, well, why not? Apprentice, oh my Let's just God. top deck some silly damage. That arcane intellect could literally... Oh my God. You know what we need here? Unstable portal into Apprentice. You oh, can start was... with that, dog. No. Please, please. I oh my god. This is insane. <laughs> Frost oh, portal first, your mana. Please I mean, use the unstable portal first. Portal yeah. first. You it. have to portal first because we don't have to, but you, you might choose the fireball. That's the Munken. Okay. Oh. Crank. That's nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Base damn damage, good. as it turns <laughs> out, does work out for the dog. That's a six mana Cochran Elite. Yeah. Is it a six mana? What is it? Six mana nine seven that plays eviscerate. Yeah, not, yeah, that not was too bad. Yesterday, yeah. the Nefarian uh, eviscerate play. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, basically, the fireball will take care of the um, the Belcher. The Rose Bolt will freeze the opponent's face and just can arc and missiles this turn. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind this because it, this just guarantees the five damage from the low thing. If you arcane missiles and whiff, you have. So well, he wants to keep the arcane missiles for arc mage. Right? That's true. But you still had... Oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah it's quite it. And he also has just four damage. He has, what, seven damage from hand now? Just with the, the just with the Kraken and the missile. Right. So I think a sprint... Uh, like a Hail Mary sprint. Yeah, I, I'm actually trying to think what he can even draw. Yeah. Like, does he does he have to Double. sap the Lothar? Like, is that going to be a sap Edwin trait? Wow. Yeah, I think he has. Yeah, he has to, because there's no way he could have even sprinted into anything that would have helped him clear as well as this. Well, good luck. Oh, <laughs> uh, another unstable portal. JJ's rogue is he, not he working. He can just out win the... if all the missiles go face. You can try first, right? Yeah, I mean, it's zero if, mana. If it's like just if you can just win with the art, like the the effect from the missiles, then why not play it? Like. Are you going to lose the game if you play missiles? And if well, you go to so. Edwin, you just finish it off with the Kraken. Kraken, yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And you will still have mana for the Unstable Portal, so maybe you Unstable Portal first. Well, no, because you need you need the... Oh, I suppose, yeah, yeah. But no, because you need the ping, right? You need the ping to finish him if it goes all goes face. Yeah, but the, you don't have to play the Kraken if everything goes free. Uh, what, I mean, what I meant is when you trade with the Edwin. Then yeah, yeah, after that, yeah. Just like if, if you went uh, okay, missiles now, you need to go first. <laughs> oh, oh. spell yeah. damage is coming up. Oh Unbelievable. Yeah. Look at that. That is. That has been an interesting game. Well, okay. three times <laughs> yeah. to I just wait to see what he did there. But, but yeah, and, uh, the thing is here, like, he doesn't need to trade into the Van Cleef because Lothar pretty much locks out any additional yeah. damage. That's so true. he's not fearing for his life on 21 health on a Lothar turn against the Rogue. So this is going to be really rough. Another Sap's going to come down onto the Ogre. Uh, stop that spell damage coming down, at least uh, at least for next turn. Or really stop the four damage coming out. But this is looking very, very rough. That's AJ, over. And it's just first going time. to be game. This is the first time I see a Kraken ends a game in a competitive environment. I think you're right. Uh, the, the few times you end up seeing... Uh, JJ just, <laughs> face just like, yep, just got cracked into the face. That, that's a blast to ease. Yeah. I mean, it could have been a Nightblade. Yeah, well, it could have been a, a number yeah. of charge minions as well. Don't ruin the fun, man. That Don't wouldn't be as man. cool, actually. <laughs> he just Come got on, splash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, water pump. Is that the uh, hydro, hydro pump? Hydro, hydro pump, hydro was, pump was best. Awesome. Splash was uh, Magikarp. Right? God, that <laughs> ability. <laughs> it's I was not, like, oh, it's not super magic. effective. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fishing pole. <laughs> Wait, this isn't what I wanted. Old rod. <laughs> oh. A one million dollar bike. <laughs> Worth it.
Yeah, we're worth every second. I'll give it for you. I'll give it for free for a coupon. <laughs> for the Malaga flock, it's a good amount of actual minion pressure, as well as like board clearing, like just on on demand removal in the form of like dart bombs, the implosions, and things like that to deal with a lot of the uh, the rogue minions. It looks like he has gone for warrior. Whoa! And, and that guy likes his weapons. This is like that uh, WoW TCG deck you told yeah. me about, where you just play weapons with the 50 weapons. In the deck. Yeah. I hope he's got tentacles for hands, because this is not going to go well. Triple wield. That would be nice. Why not? It would be nice. It would be insane. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things, though, that uh, we maybe, you know, it looks like the hand is terrible and maybe we could view it that way. One of the things it does, though, is that it guarantees removal for the entire game, almost. And with that in mind, it means that he's maybe able to use his armor up a lot more frequently, giving him enough range to stay away from Maligos lethal. Yeah, and the thing is as well, like against Maligos Warlock, it's not, a, you know, Maligos isn't really the fastest deck in the world either. So, you know, maybe a slower start benefits it because it means he just, he's not just sat with like an armor smith. He's just going to have in his yeah, hand. Like, just drop an armor smith turn two and do nothing against Maliloc. So now at least, you know, and already we're edging towards turn five. There's a Death Bite equipped. He's going to be able to more than likely clear up this this Twilight Guardian, and then he can do whatever he wants next turn. Second Death Bite, Emperor Flash. Thorson, though. Why would you play... Uh, no, mind. I just was wondering, maybe you should play the Flame War X attack twice? So the one damage means that you deal with... I guess if an M-Gang boss had been played, you could bash it and then use your axe to... Yeah, well, I, I think there was a... Yeah, there's just a... Depending on the other draws, he could remove a, a minion a bit easier with that weapon. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But yeah, the Emperor Thorson in JJ's hand is going to hit the Soul Fire, a Coil, two Dark Bombs. But not the and, Mortal and Coil that just got burned. Does not mean, <laughs> does it? But that is a huge reduction, actually, as you're saying. That's like all of the Maligos bursts right there. Yeah, double, that is free. Double Dark Bomb and Soul Fire. And it even requires the... It, what's that? Is that 20... Five, five. How much damage is that in one turn? Well, you have Dark Bombs, which is six, right? And that's then eight. Soul Fire, that's eight. So it's 16 was No, two. but you just add five to each spell. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. You just oh, add sorry, four sorry, each you spell, you right, right. add a five. So you have six from the Dark Bombs, then you have four from the uh, Soul Fire, so you have 10 from that, and then you add 15 on top of that. Yeah. So yeah. that's 25 with just those three cards, right? And that's that scary. Yeah, but it's Warrior, so it is. it does take you a bit more than just spells to go through all that armor count. If you're going to play Zombie Chow, now would be the time just to whittle away at that armor a little bit. Yep, and it's only going to heal him for two, which you're pretty okay with. If it does two, two damage to the armor and he heal his actual, like, natural health for two, right. still feeling pretty good. But minions like Twilight Drake and uh, Twilight, uh, I'm sorry, as, and as your Drake are really going to help just push this armor down as he edges towards turn 10, where we can actually play Maligos, uh, Dart Bomb, Dart Bomb, Soul Fire. Right. Now, Dog has two Brawls, so Brawl is an interesting card in this matchup because you might have to pull the trigger on it in situations where the board is barely even filled up mm -hmm. uh, in order yeah. to maybe get even like a 50-50 when you've got two Brawls, one of them might be used very liberally. That's a good point. What's going to be interesting is if um, JJ actually across maybe the next turn or so actually like attacks with the Chow and then plays the Hellfire and then follows up with another minion to just push more damage, because all he needs to do is put him to a 25 from turn 10, and he can just end the game, and there's not a lot that the warrior can do about it. I mean, at this point, I think JJ's looking for another Soul Fire from the deck or a Peddler. Those cards would be amazing for him. And uh, gonna force Dog to probably use a Brawl right away. Yep. Go see the Brawl, and with the weapon equipped, he can kill any minion that survives, so that's kind of nice. To just guarantee a full board play, but he does take the most damage with it being the Azure Drake that did survive. And it cleans up the armor pretty nicely. So now the Dark Peddler and the. Uh, basically, the Dark Peddler is an awesome card to play this next turn. Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, it's hard to see a better uh, better card to have at this point. I guess maybe finding a Twilight Guardian would be great. This is why I'm thinking, like, do you actually Hellfire this turn? I don't know. It's a tough one. No, I mean, if you can get it with even just an Azure Drake later in the game. We've seen one Azure Drake, I think. Well, that's a little bit of extra damage. I'm thinking about the Noli Squire though. Because the PO is full damage, for sure, but you need a minion on board that it will have to survive a turn. And you see that your opponent has a weapon and with two charges. And he hasn't life tapped yet as well, so he can actually yeah. play the Squire and life tap this turn. Yeah, I like that a lot. Good point. This is really nice. And you've just seen Brawl, 
He's equipped a weapon, but now there's two minions on board. <laughs> so you need to play them both. Dog's face when he saw the squire come down, he's like, oh, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, 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 it, oh wow. it is huge. Oh, my God. What is Brawl? No, it, it's a bit too early considering what you know exists in the opponent's deck. This is way too flimsy of a board to, uh, to Brawl alone. But you'll be able to whittle away at it with your weapons over the course of a few turns. And the big amount that has no targets whatsoever, so you should probably just play it right now. Right. Yeah, because uh, at this point as well, like unless you saw uh, an Alex Straza or something. Oh, hang on, who's big? Who's big game hunter? The Warriors? Uh, no, no, no. I mean on the Warlocks side. The Warlocks. Yeah, okay. I'll carry on my point then. <laughs> I just saw the Warrior big game hunter as well and was like, oh no, which one's Lothar's talking about? Um, but yeah, cause unless you saw like the Alex Straza, you're not really afraid of Grom because Grom's not going to do anything to you at this point in the game. Well, that's an interesting spot because you play Bran into a fiery war axe. You've seen the death bite, so the only thing that will kill this is going to be a mix of shield slams and whatnot. Yeah, the opponent has to have a revenge shield slams executes off of AOE. Yep, I kind of like the coil there, just generate an additional one one. It's not, not going to hurt anything. Well, it change too much. You don't really want to burn any cards in your hand. Yeah. So that was the main reason to. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Play that. It's on ten, right? Yeah. Well, these implosions are going to feel a little uh, useless until he sees the Revengers come out. He probably knows the type of deck the dog is playing at this point. It's been seen all over the tournament. This type of list is basically everything everyone's playing. That's a really interesting turn, because I thought maybe the Revenge will actually play this turn, yeah. um, just to finish up the finish up the 1-1 minions. But, uh, so maybe with Acolyte of Pain, it's going to be better. With Armor Smiths. Mm -hmm. uh, an enabler for Grom later. There's many cases where you might need to keep the uh, the AOE damage. I've got the so beast after the bash and the fourth weapon, JJ's like, I need to keep drawing through this deck, and I'm getting a little bored here. So just play BGH as a tempo card. Yeah, and he's gonna play the Twilight Guardian straight into another brawl. So, but if the Guardian survives, then the the brawl could be a little bit a little bit awkward. It is gonna remove a lot of the other minions, but I don't think there's an easy way for him to actually kill that Twilight Guardian. If the Twilight Guardian survives, it's going to be a nightmare for Dog. Yeah. Either yeah. the Gang Boss or the Twilight uh, will oh. be a problem for him. Oh, oh wow. There's this huge it, amount of damage. So if he attacks damage. into it now? Okay. Never mind. That, 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 that will have been lethal, yes. Yeah, yeah, wow. And what, I, I wonder if Dog's been paying enough attention to the hand to notice that like the first five cards have been in that and <laughs> have not moved all game, you know, from like turn four or something. Just haven't even been played. Well, you saw the Emperor come down on a turn, you know, fairly early. So you have to assume he didn't play this randomly. It hit something yeah. that was worth hitting. So whether we're talking about damage spells or Malagos alone, uh, it must have been relevant. Yeah, no one actually attack and drop the Grom now? Oh, he's got Execute. Execute the I don't think you, power? I, I don't think you can. Uh, you are allowed to play the Grom when you saw your opponent playing Big Game Hunter so recklessly, because that means most likely he has a second one. Yeah, right. And your Grom is your win condition. It's the best damage that you need to seal the deal. I have to wonder though how uh, I was gonna say like how Dog thinks he's gonna be able to contest this board. This execute will feel horrible if he ends up using the second one on a Twilight Guardian as opposed to using it on something else that's a bit more impactful. The BGH deals 4 damage to the Twilight Guardian, puts it in revenge range, uh, and after that point, there's a chance you're able to just clean it up as you play your Grom. Yeah, and the problem is, I imagine Dog isn't expecting 25 damage I think from hand. He, I, Are I you think really he expecting, be, like... Yeah. That was one of the sickest Emperor hits ever. Like, right. getting two Dart Bombs, the Malagos, and the Soul Fire. Like, that's insane. You don't normally hit all of those. Now the question is, as far as JJ is concerned, okay, nice pick up there. <laughs> I'm guessing it's Hellfire trigger time. Yeah, there we go. Hellfire comes out. Corruptor will hit. Why not? It's the time you've seen to exit. You've seen everything from this warrior. All you're missing are their shield slams. And especially because of that execute as well. Like, how is it? How is this corruptor gonna die? Because that's the key one, isn't it? If he armors up, oh, he can now he can double armor up. Does that change anything? Well, he's at 22, 27, yeah. so he's out of range. No, wait, it's can't kill the yeah, 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 yeah. Never mind. All right, so if he plays Justicar, he is going to go up uh, high enough in armor that he will feel safe, but he's going to die right away. Yeah. Yep. Oh, my God, this is crazy. Unbelievable. Malagos Warlock for JJ is just completely, I guess, surpassing my expectations of the deck. I, I'm surprised to see that the deck is working just as well. Remind me, reminds me of Purple at uh, DreamHack. Uh, brought the deck, said, yep. 
Oh yeah, I thought it was gonna do very well, and every other pro, of course, followed suit, saying, "Yeah, I thought to bring the deck." <laughs> I was like totally lining that deck up. Uh, yeah, I just didn't have the cards with me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about it, man. It was like, yeah, I, I, it was totally top one. <laughs> so JJ brings it again, surprises everybody with the deck. I want to see if it's able to take a game from Dogs Rogue. From Dogs, Dogs Rogue. Let's think about it. How do you want to play this matchup as the war? You just want to play the. The biggest, baddest dragons. Every single turn. Every single turn. So they will be, um, they will not be easily removed by the backstabs and the agents and the fan of knives. Yep. So, so only the biggest HP minions will be played at the beginning of the game in the ideal scenario. And I think the key is as well not overcommitting into a flurry. Although you do want to play these big guys every single turn, you probably don't want to fill the board depending on what the rogue's hand size looks like and right. what cards you've already seen, of course. Um, but if you don't play into a flurry, but still pressure enough with cards like Twilight Drake, uh, Corruptor as well, like quite high damage, but singled uh, cards. And yeah. you can really pressure the rogue enough to make awkward plays, which is what you need to do to be able to win the match. Because I think the rogue game's going to be a little bit quicker than that Control Warrior versus Maligos for the rogue side, at least. It should be. They're not, they're not going to want to take their time on that matchup, because if you take your time, then you're going to get hit for 25 from Maligos. And there's not enough healing. To yeah, exactly. No. I have to wonder though if uh, if Dog is going to, you know, we see the Gadget Sand. It's kind of come back in Rogue decks nowadays. It's a card engine that's very powerful um, against a deck like JJ. One of the strongest cards you can find in order to disrupt that tempo of the bodies is the Sap, of course. And it's gonna be a Maligos versus Maligos deck. Looks like uh, Double Prep has a good Gadget Sand, <laughs> pretty good Gadget Sand. Yep. But the Maligos. But JJ's is, dog. is gold, so clearly it does more damage. <laughs> Goodness, Dog has a pretty dry early game though. So if uh, if JJ comes out with nothing but just a brand straight up, right? If he opts to play it, um, like he's been doing every single time, you know, if it works, it, it wins me the game. And if it doesn't, then I'll just find something else to do later. Yeah, and the thing is as well, he's like by playing brand, you, you demand like a weird like abyss with a proc, and the weapon's only on one charge as well. So right. like deadly poison wouldn't be an easy proc. You could maybe like coin a vis and then re dagger after hitting. But by doing this, you just the trade-off is that you can potentially get a huge Twilight Drake, which almost demands a sap, or is just going to be there all game. And if you serve the Drake, you keep your brand, unless he's got the Eviscerate. And if you had it, you probably would have seen it off but, of the corner. The thing is, well, if he saps it, well, it's still in your hand. You just replay it if you want. Um, and also, you know, there's one sap gone this early in the game, which is pretty big for Malagos luck. All right, so JJ does have the coil to deal with that little 1-1. One -one. So he's going to be able to handle this board somewhat well. I have to wonder though, are you hoping, are, are you simply going to opt to kill the, because uh, yeah. the battle cry will kill the Vile Yeah, you just yeah, corrupt onto the teacher. Yeah, you don't, you don't have any reason to leave that guy up, or that girl up, sorry. This is so much value. When it's it's intense, it. yeah. It's it's insane when you think about it. It's a 5-4 million for 5 mana, so almost almost as good as it gets when it comes to paying mana for a 5 yeah, Like five, a flat right? stack. Yeah, yeah, flat yeah. stack, almost as it is. And then, Basically, for the downside of decreasing the vanilla minion by 2 HP, you get 6 damage to a minion in this scenario. This is just insane. Right. And, and the problem now is we've already seen one sap from Dog. Now he has two high high value or high threat minions to deal with. The brand's still a huge problem. Um, and also, the Corrupt is a 5 4. Like we said, it's going to hit him for so much damage. So he's going to go for the backstab with the spell power, clear it up with his face, and leave the token, which is interesting. He chose to take the 5 damage over using the 1 1 there. And the second Corruptor comes out with the core. Oh, 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 and Dog is laughing. <laughs> They're like, okay. You know what? Some I games I'm not meant to win. I but hate you, Brand Bronze <laughs> He's got the Gadisen with the prep, with the coin. There might be something to be doing there. Uh, if only the cards line up for him. There is also the interesting play of using the Pillager, the coin, the SI, kill the brand, finally get rid of it, yeah. and keep I that second coin. Yeah, yeah, he just he has to. Because what this will do is the Pillager, if it, even if it just trades straight up to the Corruptor, um, he's going to gain the coin for Gadgets and next turn, so he has prep and coin to be able to you know, maybe pull something off. Because now, you know, Dog's going a little bit low on cards. Low on cards? That doesn't even matter. He's low on health. And That's also <laughs> an issue. That's also a relatively yeah. large issue. I, I mean, yeah. look at look at the damage. There's a Hellfire, Dark Bomb, and an Abusive Sergeant. And you can use that either as a burst or as a utility spell yeah. in this situation. So Dog, <laughs> Dog is... Crazy. He's got the laughter of a man who feels like he shouldn't be laughing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Yeah. I think that's the issue, isn't it? <laughs> By the way, how crazy it is that we have two Maligoses 
Yeah. In right. a top 16 of a major tournament. Now, I wonder though if Dog will not opt to play the Belcher and uh, kill the 2 1 with his weapon just to get that Malagos and on the coin and then prep Phantom Knives uh, to clean up the board. Is that better than playing the Gadget Sand? I mean, right now, I don't I know how much he can achieve. Well, you can Gadget Sand, prep, fan, coin, hero power, hero power kill, kill the four, right. uh, kill the uh, big game hunter. And pick up maybe a second prep. And just pick up over anything. <laughs> you know, anything that's going to do anything here. But yeah, like the second prep will be sick. But like, I just think you, the big game hunter is going to get some work done regardless. You may as well just take the damage. And then if by some way JJ doesn't have a lot of bursts from hand, then the Gadget Zen's probably going to deal with the 5-4. Yeah. So apparently Dog opts for the Belcher play. I think he's going all in on that Malagos next turn. And considering there's no Lothab and no way to really stop this, yeah. it's a decent play. I don't dislike it, but um, that's a pretty decent pickup. And that's 7 damage in the, in the hand. 5. So the attack with a 5-4 to Belcher, you... He's got 11, right? Good. Yeah, that's 11 damage. Yeah. So he's still a little bit off, so I imagine we're probably going to see the do two 4 drops this turn. Like, why not? Yeah, why not? I agree completely. Yeah. Cause the light, especially because the Drake's got... Uh, oh, okay, well, the Drake's not actually got that much health. Still only 6 because the hand sides... Right, Phantom Knight, nice. everything will be cleared off by this Malagos play again. You know, this is the Phantom Knight's all in, but now I think... Is, is JJ going to smile at this play? Because this feels bad. This. 6 damage and Phantom Knight. How crazy is that? Now we have and to draw wonder, a card, which is important. How does JJ... Oh, that's a lot of verse coming in. If JJ is able to muster just a tiny bit more damage, he could pull it off. Wait, the Drake plus... Yeah, it's not quite there. Does he need to Hellfire this turn? Uh, what would you Hellfire? Because you, then he can Mali go Soulfire next turn and kill him. But you die. Yeah, but then you're dead, right? If your opponent will have another spell damage. That might be a risk you have to Four, take, 21. to be honest, uh, just, Let me just count it. It's a 21 of the attack, because you are not removing the Malagos, right? One damage from the weapon, so you're going to 20. One at this rate is basically at least 7 damage. With the combo, that's 9. Second of this rate is 18, so you're still... If you Hellfire, you're in range of double eviscerate. Right. Yeah, I and just think flurry, at this and there are a lot of really. Uh, yeah, I, I just a think at this point, stuff. if you can set up lethal, because the game's so close and the rogue's only on three cards. <laughs> yeah, this is. Oh, okay. I oh, like you this. Just Maligos, that works. That, I am loving this, forcing his opponent to have an answer to his own Maligos. He does, however, have the eviscerate four nine plus the weapon hit or the trade with the uh, his but own Maligos. But still win. Right. Because you have seven damage in your hand, so a dog bomb top deck, a Hellfire top deck, uh, just straight up wins the game. Let's see what JJ picks up. This, this, is, this very is very tense. tense. Yeah. Very tense. Oh. I mean, you can always clean up the, like, the Gaddis hand. You can clean up this board if you want, right? And so Drake, the draw Hellfire, is Hellfire, and Drake. Ooh. There's a clean up there. JJ can just clean up the board with Hellfire, Soulfire. Like, it's at least uh, something he can do. Well, he has to. Otherwise, the the Malagos is just so threatening. Yeah, yeah I, I don't see a way, uh, like a way out of this. But this Malagos lives. Oh, Ooh, that was interesting. That was pretty ballsy. That was, yeah, that was scary. That what, was. Why, why would you do that? Was that? Just, I think that was just wrong, right? I am. I'm freaked out. Hellfire. I am freaked yeah. out. <laughs> Yeah. Because why would you play Soulfire oh, if you goodness. don't plan on playing Hellfire, right? It, well, okay. it's not as if he Soulfired the Gadget Zan and then was just like, I'm going to leave Maligos. You know, because then yeah. you're like, well, yeah, yeah you don't need exactly. to play Exactly. But like, he Hellfired to clear the ball. I, I'm freaking wow. out right now. I'm like, it's pretty good <laughs> for uh, JJ that it lined up this way. Now, however... It, it's pretty good. It would have been disastrous if it didn't. I, I want to see what JJ can do here. I mean, he's got only a second Hellfire to deal with this board, right? The implosion can help a little bit, but... Well, it has to clear up the Azure Drake, right? It has to be the target. But if Look. it hits for three... <laughs> oh. It's four! Wow. All right, Dog still has some card draw, picks up a Deadly Poison, so he's got a decent amount of damage, two draws oh, flurry. for a Flurry. Huge. Don't you first play Deadly Poison just to see the... No, right. Yeah, it's zero mana, so you're, always, you're gonna do it anyway, right? You don't have spell power to kill the Drake regardless. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you're planning on flurrying... Like, this is the problem now, because Shiv draws him two cards. But so he's gonna, yeah, this is right, because if he gets Blade Flurry, he can still clear the board. Right. And the Shiv draws him oh, first. Oh, Blade Flurry. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I was thinking about the Falnos. This is why I was thinking maybe about the Dead Poison first. But this was way better. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. was way better from, from Dog. Really well played. So JJ here needs to pick up an answer to something because right now he's about to lose the game and the Coil might give him oh. another card. It means he can roll three. 
Oh, oh wow. Man, man. That, that is was it. Close. JJ goes down in the Malagos mirror match. That was a really intense game. I don't even know. But what could it be? What if that Soulfire would have discarded oh, Hellfire? That was crazy. I, I want to say he didn't get punished by this exact play, but he ended up losing the series, so I guess uh, justice was served. It was a really good game, though, because like both players identifying exactly when they need to commit to Malagos. I loved it. And when you have to throw away that Soulfire in Hellfire, normally you're like, well, I'm playing Malagos, so I want to go face. But instead, he used it to actually just clear up the minions because he knew that was the way to continue the game and survive right. longer. Really high level play from both players there, other than maybe the, the kind of ropey Soulfire <laughs> there. Other yeah. than that one point, very high level play. <laughs> but an enjoyable game to cast yeah. as well. I'll say that much, right? I didn't expect to see a no druid lineup, first of all, so that's very, uh, it's kind of refreshing to see. And Dog's gonna be moving on to the top eight with this uh, with this set. And Super JJ relegated to the, I don't wanna say loser's bracket, but basically yeah, he's gone. Uh, he's <laughs> eliminated. Oh, oh, JJ will not be taking this okay, tournament. Teammates, fine. And Dog yeah. keeps his chance of getting this uh, maybe first place win that he wants to get later on.